bonjour, and welcome to the Amateur Detective Club. This club is exactly how it sounds. A bunch of amateurs talking about their favorite mysteries. So if you encounter a real mystery or a murder, contact the proper authorities. Do not come to us. We do not know what we are doing. But enjoy the program. Allons-y. Let us begin. I now call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to order. My name is Tristan Miller, the Saucy Sleuth. I am Melissa Maley, the Spy. I'm Tyler Riley, Cop and a Half. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash adcpod and browse the unmatched selections of audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It is that easy. Just go to audibletrial.com slash adcpod. Um, the recommendation I would make is Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie, uh, which we have covered before with one Travis McElroy, previously. Of the internet. Of the internet fame, yes. yes. That is weird. He is famous for just being on the internet. You ever yeah. think about how stupid that, <laughs> that people I mean, are just famous for being online? It's... I guess people a long time ago would say, you know how stupid that is? People are just famous for being on TV. Yeah. yeah. I think that's stupid too. <laughs> I think being famous is stupid. You should, here's my hot take. Great. You should be a cult leader or shoot a president to be famous and everything else is just posed. Okay. I think that's a bit extreme. <laughs> but it does uh, remind me of a great, 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 great ancestor back uh, in the BC time, who used to get mad at people for being famous for just being on cave drawings. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real pissed at that Noah guy. What did he do? <laughs> Has a whole book written about him. <laughs> Uh, oh, you got some stone tablets with some <laughs> words written on them. All right, Moses, why don't you get off your god dang mountain? <laughs> <laughs> your high mountain. <laughs> Lordy. Uh, but yeah, it's just weird. It's not dumb or stupid. It's just different. Yeah. It's just, yeah. yeah. It's just changing. Yeah. It is oh. pretty wild that people get famous because yeah, they it, are just like us. <laughs> Yeah, conceptually, that's so yeah. strange. Like, um, so TDF hosted a conversation with two of the original stars of Rock of Ages because um, they yeah. have or had a reunion concert mm. uh, with, like, the all-star okay. uh, company of Rock of Ages. And they were telling the story about, like, a, the Tony performance that they gave. And how they like had to do some crowd work, and it was supposed to be Angela Lansbury uh, that they did crowd work with, but she ended up getting like an award back in England, so she skipped the Tonys. So they sure. used Liza Minnelli instead. That makes sense. And uh, apparently, uh, like before the show, like they're going over things, and like, like right before the Tony star, Liza apparently goes up to one of them and is just like, oh gosh, I'm so nervous. And they're like, it's Liza Minnelli. Like, are you, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're, we're rock of ages and it's Liza Minnelli. Like, what are you, calm down. Like, it's, it's going to be okay. <laughs> but like, she was just, you know, Dang. what's like the last thing that she's done? Like, aside from like Arrested Development. I was going to say know? Arrested Development. Um, become an icon for being on Larry King in that one clip. Well, fair. Uh, <laughs> but, like, she's this legendary performer, but, mm. like, I wonder if her nerves or wondering if, like, you know, you still have it has factored into, mm. you know, her mm. performing. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people I've, you know, I've typed interviews with people and they say, oh, I always get nervous. Like, always. Oh, wow. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Just keep powering through. Everybody's nervous. 
I had an original point. I don't know if I tied back to what we were talking <laughs> about at all. Well, you, there, you, Melissa said famous people are just like us. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's what it was. Um, they get nervous like us. I want to be just famous enough. Like, I want people in my profession to know who I am. And when people see me performing, go, wow, good job. She's great. And people, but like, I want to be able to go to the grocery store and most of the time be left alone. I remember what I was going to say. Oh, good. And then I want to talk about what Melissa said. Okay. But Seinfeld has that bit of like public speaking is the number one fear in America, followed by death. So people would rather be in the casket than give the eulogy. <laughs> mm. Huh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I hear you, Melissa. I, though, would love to be accosted at a Costco. And be like, are you that guy? Because I love the attention. I'm a youngest child. I demand the attention. I mean, and I, I just want to be at a point where I'm like, what's a Costco? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the Costco because I want to show them that I'm the I'm an everyman. I'm a I'm one of them. I'm one of the people. Right. I mean, I guess getting recognized would be fun sometimes, but only when I'm in the mood. Yeah. I guess I just want to be able to put on a pair of sunglasses and a baseball cap and mm -hmm. have have be a total, you know, chameleon. Just I absorb always thought I would just make t-shirts that just say do not approach I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> I want that now. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, there's a market for it. Yeah. Go to teespring.com slash <laughs> Because I wanted to get a shirt made like in high school that was like, if you can read this, you are too close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then people might get close just to read the shirt. Uh, and true. that was the, that's what prevented me. You just need big type. <laughs> you got to get that elderly type. That's yeah. Funny. Very An big elderly type. You got to get type. that 72 point font. Yeah. An elderly type Pokemon. <laughs> I choose you and they just like. <laughs> <laughs> Use life Who is alert. That, hypno. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Tristan, uh, you're I, learning how to drive. I am. I'm learning how to drive for the first time. But yeah, it's weird. It's weird driving a car. I I I've been saying this. Driving's really hard. Okay. Because you have to pay attention to a bunch of stuff all at the same time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we let teenagers do this. Yeah. Number one. Number two, I think pilots have it easier because all you got to do is get that plane up, put it on autopilot, and then you got to get the plane down. It's two things, whereas it's not five things where you now you don't have a turn signal on a plane is what I'm saying, folks. Well, that's true. And for good reason. Like, there shouldn't be that many planes in the sky at one time that you <laughs> would need a, a turn Can signal. Can you imagine a pilot doing a hand signal yes, out of the what? side of the window? <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you do have, like, mountains and stuff to deal with. Rich, well, of course, I... has been learning how to fly. Mm -hmm. And he has been telling me about a local airport where uh, one of his instructors took him and was like, okay... So you got to be careful about this airport because people misjudge this hill. Mm. And if you misjudge this hill, you can crash and die. Mm. It's like, oh, goodness. Okay. Because <laughs> I guess, you know, you're like, oh, well, that doesn't look like it's in my way. Oops, it's in my way. I'm dead. <laughs> um, and there's like, I feel like less of a chance for that in a car. I don't um, know. Jackie Robinson Parkway yeah. is a, a pain. I don't know what that means. Well, yeah, uh, you're also learning how to drive in New York, yeah, which is yeah, wild. Yeah. I won't drive in New York, oh. and I know how to drive. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Um, I'll say this. My instructor is this, like, middle-aged Greek woman. Perfect. She, Nikki. Oh, I lo I'm in love with her. She <laughs> is vaping the entire time, and she's just, like, telling me. She's, like, she'll instruct you in a way where you're not – well, she won't go, like, you need to – you need to put, you know, a little bit more pressure on the acceleration or whatever. He'll mm -hmm. say, she'll say, like, I I push down on my brake. I push on my accelerator. I turn all the way. The, and she'll say it in I, which is, like, really actually effective because you're thinking, like, oh, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but she said to me my first day driving, she was like, are you sure you've never driven a car before? And I was like, yeah, I think I would know. <laughs> and 
She's like, I, I on your first day driving and you break like this. And I was like, is that good? She's like, yes. She's uh, she calls me. Uh, uh, she goes, my fast learner. <laughs> I was doing parallel uh-huh. parking this last week, and she's like, how did you? And I'm like, I've been. I'm almost thirty. <laughs> I've seen how a car does it, you know. <laughs> Me in the meantime, I have driven since I was 16 years old and I think I've gotten worse at parallel parking because I get very worried about mm. it. I get very scared um and I don't have great depth perception as it turns out. Uh, so I yeah. I just don't have the patience. Mm. That's fair. <laughs> I don't know why you're saying that. It's just two turns. You just go what, and you back up, and then you go what, and then you straighten out. Not the way I do it. The okay. way I do it, it's about five. Interesting. <laughs> and if you have people walking or like traffic mm. behind you, it's oh, a if pain. you have traffic that behind is true. you, they should know better though. <laughs> but people don't. People just see like the turn <laughs> signal and just think that you're going to turn somewhere, that not that you're backing up into. I will say in New York, pedestrians, and I'm one of them, abuse the right of way. We absolutely abuse. Like, I have been, like, a green light is fully there, and I'm just walking in the middle of the street. And I was like, now I have sympathy for these cars, which I never wanted. I never (laughs) wanted that. (laughs) Well, just there are, there have been instances where I have been in the crosswalk, and it's a red light, and I've almost gotten hit by a car. Yeah. I'll say this. Now that I know the rules of the road, I see every person and I'm like, you did not stop at the stop line. You're in the crosswalk, you idiot. You can get a ticket for that. My yeah. friend Joe, he drives me to the comedy show every week. And he is just like, he's been driving in Queens since he was like 16. So he mm-hmm. knows everything. He's G-G-G-G-G-G-G. And he just in the middle of the crosswalk, he'll like, not to put my boy Joe on blast here, but I'm like, I get nervous because I'm like, you should, what is happening? And then I recently started playing GTA for the first time. And no. I'm out here going, there's no turn signal on the car. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a bait. Like, I lost a mission because they were like, you took too long. I'm like, well, I, w- I was at the stoplight. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, like, I has a gun to my head in the game. And I'm like, I have to obey the rules of the road. <laughs> You got to come to a complete stop every yeah, time. Exactly. I do actually. I'm really good about that. Um, mm. About coming to a complete stop. Um, oh my gosh. But yeah, I was very annoyed in my initial driving test because at one at one of the things that they took points off for was it was like it was like a lane and a half road and there weren't any lines on it mm. and I like moved a little bit to the left and they were like oh you should put on your turn signal I'm like come on oh that's dumb yeah you don't it was to do that. it was stupid um, <laughs> but I haven't driven in a couple of years until a couple months ago when I started being out in Pennsylvania a lot. And Rich finally got a car that I'm comfortable driving because, as I said, I don't have great depth perception, so I don't like driving big cars. Mm. Um, So I never wanted to drive his truck, but he has a small SUV now that I'm fine with. And it's been really wild um, because out here in rural Pennsylvania, where I'm staying with him, it's there's like, oh, there's a turkey crossing (laughs) (laughs) in just in the middle of the road. (laughs) You're going like. 60 miles an hour, and you're like, well... Tight walk. Oops. Um, <laughs> I, I guess uh, I guess I'm stopping because I don't want to yep. hit this turkey. Yep. And he's like, it's my turn. Yeah. He doesn't care about I... the fact that he's jaywalking. Yeah. Again, <laughs> pedestrians abuse the right away. That's right. Especially turkeys. Yeah. Uh, birds are also... Birds have a death wish. Birds don't get out of the way until, like, the last second. You're like, am I going to hit this bird? (laughs) Move, bird. You have wings. Move. Okay, so two things. One, I like this idea that a bird is smart enough to be, like, suicidal. Like, Mm -hmm. self-aware enough. Whereas, like, there's just dumb animals, Melissa. Okay, (laughs) hold up. I saw a very enlightening movie called Spies in Disguise, Mm. which (laughs) completely changed my opinion about birds. 
What was your p- opinion before? That they were dumb. What's your opinion now? That they're not. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> is it Spies in Disguise a cartoon about an animated film, I'm sorry, about pigeons? Yes, about a spy that gets turned into a pigeon, but he oh. makes pigeon friends along the way. Ugh. I see. I almost got hit in the head with a pigeon a couple of weeks ago. With a pigeon? Someone took yeah, a pigeon yeah. and, hit no. you and tried to hit you in the head? <laughs> yes, some, some <laughs> base head came up and started wailing on me. No, uh, I just he flew right in. like I got clipped by the wing. It was wow. like, truly New York is, nature is healing. Yeah. <laughs> As the youth say. Yes. You know what else is exciting? Here we go. Do the segue. Come on. Tell us. Okay. <laughs> I just <laughs> was excited. <laughs> I was just excited to see what you do. Yeah. Jennifer Lopez is doing a murder mystery movie written by Misha Green. Oh, oh my goodness. From Lovecraft Country fame. Mm. So I'm really excited about the prospect of that. And it'll be for the Netflix. Oh, very good. Amazing. We're also getting from Netflix Knives Out 2 and 3. So yeah. they are in the mystery market. We yeah, will we're never. We're also supposedly getting that murder mystery too as well. Oh, <laughs> good. We needed that. Um, we will never run out of content. We will not. Oh, You'll man. never get rid of us, listeners. And speaking of getting rid of. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of getting rid of, that's what happens in oh, this goodness. episode of Agatha Christie's Poirot, season 10, episode 2, Cards on the Table. Someone mm-hmm. is gotten rid of because there's a murder. <laughs> Perfect. Not the segment. cards. The cards are okay. The yeah, cards, the are, cards okay. are fine. Spoiler I realize word. that the, uh, the title of the book has a double meaning because they play cards. And also, as the episode goes on, everyone is laying their cards out on the table metaphorically. Oh, wow. You got me all flush. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, are you my favorite card game? Because I like to pick up 52 of you, if oh you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, we open on Quarrel. With a woman who we come to find out is Ariadne Oliver. She is played by Zoe Wanamaker, Mm -hmm. who is wonderful. And she is Madame Hooch in the Harry Potter films. Yes. Yeah. Which is how I know every British actor, apparently. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Because I was like, who is that? Was she in The Worst Witch? And I'm like, no. No, no. There were broomsticks involved, though. (laughs) she's also in this wonderful sitcom called my family Mm -hmm. about a builder who's going through a divorce or is he a widower either way his wife is not in the picture but she plays his mother-in-law that is still around for some reason it also has um colin from love actually that actor he's very funny it's all very good very working class Mm -hmm. yeah sitcom highly recommend excellent that's what i know her from yeah she's been i mean she works a lot uh and of course ariadne oliver is a recurring character so yeah, we we'll be seeing more of her think five more episodes talk more? about an oliver twist uh, <laughs> <laughs> um i also want to acknowledge in this moment uh, my upstairs neighbors are like moving around furniture so if you hear that that's what that is ariadne oliver and Hercule poirot are at this museum or a gallery i couldn't quite make heads or tails i believe it's a gallery because he says i've per um the character shaitana says i've purchased several pieces so it's like an okay it's a gallery that it has an auction right yes so they're chatting about some arts uh we find out that ariadne oliver is an author who writes detective fiction crazy and uh this character of course is essentially Agatha writing herself into the books. Um, and she's very fun. Uh, it's they like Agatha meet... poking fun at herself, which is nice. Yeah. Yes. They come across a man named Mr. Shaitana. And he is played by Alexander Siddig, mm-hmm. who I love. 
Um, <laughs> uh, he is Julian Bashir in Deep Space Nine. He is Doran Martell in The Game of Thrones. Uh, oh, yeah. And he's also apparently been in Gotham, which I didn't watch, but he was Ra's al Ghul. And uh, oh. he's just fantastic. Yeah, um, Mr. Shaitana is a weirdo, basically. He's a professional weirdo. No one likes him or understands him. He's wealthy. He has a hobby of photography. He likes art. He talks to Poirot and Ariadne Oliver, and they're like, what a weirdo. But then he yeah. invites them to dinner. But also in this scene, we get a little um, precursor of what's to come because uh, Ariadne Oliver is gossiping with Poirot about, like, who is this person? Nope. Not until they like, get to the house. Okay, that's to the house? Yeah. Okay, well then never mind. But they get yeah. invited to this weird dinner with mm -hmm. this weirdo. Yes. He is, would be absolutely like a fedora wearing milady type if it was modern day. Who would? Shaitana. You think so? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just because you're attractive doesn't mean you're not a weirdo. No, I, well, first, I don't really find him that attractive. No, oh, there you go. No accounting for taste. Mm -hmm. that's fair like i don't think he's <laughs> unattractive like i just wouldn't look twice i yeah. like i like if he like swiped right on <laughs> twinder or whatever the hell is now called. wait <laughs> <laughs> now twinder something else that's for the south okay oh. <laughs> oh. if that's when you're looking for twins yeah you know? exactly <laughs> 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 Well, to be fair, he is not uh, at his his peak in this. They try to make him look more creepy. Um, and as he looks like the human personification of Scar. Oh, yeah. In this episode. Mm. Sure. He's I can see like, that. Which, like, like I think he looks cool, but I don't necessarily find him attractive is what mm. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dr. Bashir has. Yes. He's, yeah, I'll have to look cute. him up separately. Yeah, yeah, he's also like in his twenties in DS Nine, and he's like got a lot of vim and vigor, and the character's very charming and fun. Gotcha. So that really helps. Whereas like, Shaitana is not. Once again, he is a weirdo. Yeah, uh, I have so recluse. much trouble seeing. So he's a. I, I find him to be a very good actor, but I uh, I also find him so charming, mm. especially having seen him in DS Nine. Mm. And now I'm like, that it sounded strange when everyone in the episode was like, oh, he's such a creep. I'm like, really? <laughs> you can be a creep and charming, though. No, yeah. you sure can. You can Scott nice Rudin. Oh, okay. We went. Too divergent. But still, like, the same central issue. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's true. That's fair. Oh, look, That's I, totally fair. I guess, like, look at Jeff Goldblum. Very charming. Absolutely a perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah he... Oh, and uh, John Waters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. From what I hear, charming individual in person, but like he just knows how to turn the creep dial up when mm -hmm. necessary. Mm -hmm. um, and we speaking of a... creeping, we <laughs> are at the dinner party now. Yes. Yeah, we are. To... Oh, and we meet the cast of characters. There's a doctor. Um... I got you. Go okay. Off. I Queen. I am looking at the IMDb, so <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we One meet this cast of sure. yeah, we meet this cast of characters who uh, Poirot and Oliver have this very handy dandy little exposition conversation about. Um, <laughs> isn't that this person? Isn't that mm -hmm. this person? Mm -hmm. uh, so we have Doctor Roberts. All right. Uh, we have Mrs. Lorimer. Mm. My favorite. Oh, the oh. best. Uh, we have Anne Meredith, and we have Major Despard. Yes. Um, Before we move on, uh, mm -hmm. can you give me the actress who plays Mrs. Lorimer's name once more? She's in this fantastic show called River. She's done episodes of Midsummer Murder. Like, I love her work. I can just never remember her full name. Yes, it's Leslie Manville. Manville. Mm. Yes, and I looked her up too because she looked so familiar. But I, she's just been in everything is really the thing. Yeah. It's not one thing that I'm thinking of. And never misses, as Tristan oh, says. Never misses. It's absolutely yes, I'm the true. only person that says that. Well, you're the only person I know that does. Really? Yeah. Huh. There you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we have these four civilian folk. 
if you will. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, we have Poirot, who is the world's greatest detective. Mm -hmm. We have the author, the crime writer, Ariadne Oliver, a real Jessica Fletcher type. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you took Jessica Fletcher and Carrie Fisher and just shoved them into one body, that would be this performance. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Very weird, eccentric woman. Phenomenal. Yeah, so great. Uh, and then we have Colonel Hughes, I guess. Is that the other uh, the other two detective mm -hmm. types? So we've got like four civilians for our purposes here and four detectives. I'm doing air quotes. Um, and Mr. Shaitana. So there's nine people at dinner, including the host. Um, and the... Isn't there... Uh, Four detectives? Yeah, there's four detectives. You only I mentioned, I guess I, we already mentioned Superintendent Battle. Yeah. Okay. Superintendent Battle. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I couldn't come up with his name because he is not in the shortened list that I'm looking at. Okay. Anyway. Um, but yes. And Colonel Hughes and Superintendent Battle are two different characters that I get confused often. Yes. I'll say this as well. Um, Shaitana, it makes a really weird move. He's like, okay, I have two rooms. Why don't we all play, what is it, rummy? No. no it's bridge. Br uh, bridge. Bridge. Thank you. The rubbers is what they call it, and I get them confused. The rubbers are like the rounds of yes. games? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, everything yes, I they know. are. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I know about bridge, I learned from cards on the table. So. Uh, mm. Yeah. Um, um, but yes. Queen's Gambit, but it's Uno. <laughs> <laughs> sure. One of my favorite, or Jenga. Yeah. One, one of my favorite images is just Mads Mickelson from um, Casino Royale, but with Warhammer figures. <laughs> <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> On a five up save, Mr. Bombed. <laughs> it's very good. Um, but they sequester these two groups, and Shaitana is hanging out in the parlor with the civilians, and then the the officer types are all in a room and they're like, What is happening? What is going on? Yeah, they're just playing bridge. Um, mm. At dinner, however, uh, beforehand, oh, Shaitana had made a couple of re like really pointed remarks about how people kill and why they kill, and mm -hmm. like poison's a woman's weapon, of course. And Poirot's like, yes, yes, usually that's correct. Thank you, Agatha Christie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you know, he says something like, "If I were to kill someone, then I would probably make it look like an accident." Yeah. Um, something that no one would look twice at he he like which like it, how original guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> um he also when he mentions the poisons he's like doctors so often poison their patients and dr roberts is like when will, will you do it quite by accident and that gets a laugh for some reason and i'm like yeah are people just uncomfortable i would imagine so mm. yeah i I mean, I think that he seems like he he's setting up this kind of personality. <laughs> he's setting up his personality as if, <laughs> uh, you know, like he's got a little bit of a not a gallows humor, but, you know, he's got a morbid sense of humor about the fact that, you know, sometimes when someone goes to the doctor, they die because they're sick. So yeah. he says at one point to the detectives later on, I only kill a reasonable number of my patients. Yeah. You know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And it's like, I mean, fair enough. That seems fair because no. sometimes people do die when they're in medical care and it's not the doctor's fault. Save some, you lose some. Yeah. Right. It's 1930 whatever and sometimes medicine isn't great, it turns out. That also, I um, mean... But yeah, also Shaitana is like, also you could have a hunting accident or a domestic dispute. And he's like naming very specific instances of like a way one might accidentally kill someone. Just yeah. uh, for my pur purposes in terms of like talking about this time, this is still like the time period in which men were just sending women to like institutions for like... For having their speaking, period. yeah, without being spoken to, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hysterical, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hysterectomies, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, and of <clears> course, 
uh, Mrs. Oliver at one point says, I think that if women were in charge of Scotland Yard, we would be much better off. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. When women. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, Hughes and um, Battle, the completely uh, interchangeable character. <laughs> Oh. Get a good laugh out of that. Yeah. And Poirot, <laughs> like, gives a... Because, like, can I tell you, one of my favorite changes they made about this episode is Poirot really likes Ariadne. Yeah. yeah. In the book, it was way more combative, which I thought was a weak point. Whereas, like, now they get along and they're friends, and I think that's A-plus change. Because he shares, like, a knowing glance with her, like, these morons, they yeah. do not know what they are talking about. And that it's... really works. Mm-hmm. It's... Also fun, like, because uh, <laughs> Ariadne also, like, it's almost like reverse, because Ariadne seems to get more frustrated with Poirot than the reverse, because, mm-hmm. like, she'll, and it's mostly over, like, references she makes about her own books mm-hmm. that she just expects Poirot to know. <laughs> yeah, because he's read all her books. They He does establish that, and he's like, yeah. there was one flaw, and she goes, yes, I know this thing. I don't care that yeah. it's fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a reference to a short story that Agatha had written previously, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely uh, making digs at herself. And, uh, you know, oh, yes, people are always disappointed when they meet me. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, has written this character that she absolutely hates, but everyone else loves. And uh, yeah. she has to keep writing him. She's That's very, very sweet. annoyed all the time. and it's But it's in a wonderful way. Which, Which I believe is how delight. Agatha felt about Poirot yes. at a certain point. She was like this albatross. Same with um, Conan Doyle and Sherlock. Yeah. They just, they just hate these characters that are famous. God and Jesus, the Bible. <laughs> just, oh my. That is the funniest thing you've ever said. To like, we gotta kill them all. <laughs> gotta I can't them keep writing. Like... <laughs> The Book of John, banger. The book, <laughs> and then Saint Paul had to show up and start writing fan fiction. By the time we get to Genesis, <laughs> <laughs> just like that, yes, exactly like that. <laughs> oh, I love to laugh. Revelation's like, I got it. I got it. We about, we out of this. Yeah, we're out like lost. Just everything. <laughs> and left us, still left us the door for a sequel. You're right. Perfect comparison, Tyler. <laughs> Sign me up for comedy at the B. I got my type five right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> Okay, so then they're playing bridge mm-hmm. for a long into the night till like one in the morning, and then everyone's at a certain point. They're like, "I gotta go home," and one of them is like, "I I have a family, I can get, <laughs> I gotta go," which never comes up again. But he's like, yeah. "I got kids, I gotta go," and Poirot's like, "Yeah, me too. I don't have kids, but I want to leave." Yeah, <laughs> which yes. is relatable. Uh-huh. Um, and then they're trying to say goodbye to uh, Mr. Shaitana, who is fallen asleep by the fireplace and then it turns out he's been stabbed by a letter opener pin <laughs> yeah it's a if i had a nickel <laughs> it is a, a very very thin dagger so it's yes. superintendent battle that goes to wake him mm-hmm. up he's like oh he's fallen asleep oh no and then he gathers everyone and this is the best he says so i have something to say um i regret to inform you all that mr shaitana has died. Very British. <laughs> well, like <laughs> terribly sorry, but a man is deceased. <laughs> to be fair, but um, there's like this weird like parade of oh, yeah. like one person goes over to the body and like, calls over somebody. Else. Yeah, <laughs> like, it like, goes battle like Poirot, three people. then battle Poirot, Poirot, and then um. The colonel. Uh, the colonel. The colonel. Yeah. And then Dr. Roberts goes, oh, I'm a doctor. Let me check. And they're like, hey, yeah. no, you could have easily killed him. But you could just see, like, the saltiness in Ariadne's face. Yeah, like, when, like, like, the three people that she was playing <laughs> cards with got called over. She's like, what she's is like, happening? <laughs> yeah. Are you complaining about me? Yeah. What a boys club. Mm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So. Boys club sandwich. So he is dead. It could be. <laughs> sure, it could be. That's what I call a threesome. 
<laughs> it's a special at boxes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Melissa. No, Take that's all right. Um, <laughs> so, yes, uh, they're all gathering and he is dead. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, no. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> How awful. So, of course, Mr. Shaitana had been in the room. <laughs> Sorry, how awful this terribly unlikable person is now gone. <laughs> right. I- essentially. Yeah, so okay. I wish y'all could see the look Melissa gave after she said that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's really a shame that half of my humor comes from my face. And mm. this is an audio medium. But <laughs> but yes, uh, everyone uh, knows that he is dead. And now we have to dis- have to um, decipher. Decipher? Mm. Uh Work out who the murderer is. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the detectives gather and are like, okay, let's get to the bottom of this. And they're like, "Um, excuse me, Mrs. Oliver, could you please leave the room? She's like, oh, for the love of God, I lost a lot of, (laughs) I just lost a ton of money at bridge and I am smart and you can let me in on this. And they're like, fine, whatever. (laughs) The deciding vote. And he's like, yes, please. I would like yeah. this personality. I would like a fun, a singular fun personality yeah. as opposed to these two, the most neutral men on the face of the planet. Blank slates. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's very hard to. <laughs> Honestly, don't even remember if they come back until the end of the episode. Um, they do. They do okay. because superintendent is assisting Poirot throughout and then the colonel shows up for like two scenes. Um, and is like, oh, we have to consider something else. Which as far as I'm concerned, Poirot did the investigation by himself, except for when Ariadne joins him. <laughs> More or less, that's <laughs> what it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Tricky bit of business. So they try to figure out why why these four people. And turns out that Shaitano was a weirdo and like <laughs> a collector of people, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> God. All of these four people he suspected had killed somebody. Mm-hmm. Is what it comes down to. So, who have they killed? Did they know that Shaitana knew? Mm-hmm. And who had the opportunity? Poirot is very curious about what everyone notices in the room. Hmm. And very curious about the bridge game. Yeah. Who got up when? Because the detectives were all in one room by themselves, and the civilians, these murderers, alleged, uh, were in a room with Mr. Shaitana. So mm-hmm. he sat in the room with the murderers. And he asked, like, specifically how each person that comes in, he asked about how they play. Yeah. Like, their personalities as, like, card players, which right. was really interesting yeah Yeah. he has all the scorecards and for example Anne meredith uses both sides of the paper and so he's like oh she was poor at some point she Mm -hmm. doesn't waste paper um and you can get kind of a little bit of the psychology from that um and they do these initial interviews and at a certain point Anne, when they're interviewing Anne, she doesn't know if she got up from the table she kind of has a breakdown she's very nervous um the the woman you love what is Lorimer. her name? Uh, Mrs. Lorimer? Yeah, denies anybody getting up, I believe. Um, She's very focused on no, the actual game. Except she outs herself. Yes, she outs herself as going over to Shaitana. And Roberts confirms that. And Robert also goes and makes a drink. Two drinks. Like, he makes drinks for himself and then drinks for the ladies at a point? I believe Anne. Anne, okay. Um, yeah. And then the other guy, <laughs> the colonel... Not the colonel. No. Uh, Major Despard. Major. Yeah. yeah. Who I, when I pictured him, when we were reading the book, I pictured him as Clayton from Tarzan. <laughs> and I don't oh. know why. Because he like goes on expedition. Yeah, and I'm like, I could see that. Oh, sure. Uh, the actor, by the way, his first name is Tristan. Mm. Gotta oh, get it killed, I guess. Um, uh, and isn't like her name Honeysuckle or something? Like honeysuckle weeks or something like that. Uh, that's not Anne. That's Ms. Dawes. Ms. Dawes. Okay. Yeah, honeysuckle weeks is her name. Uh, Anne Meredith is played by an actress named Lindsay Marshall. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, um, who I, I could swear I've seen somewhere before. Yeah, she's a very familiar face. All the and women look familiar, and none of the men except for Alexander Siddig look familiar. Yes, and <laughs> David Suchet. Um, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Sous -shirt>. <laughs> <laughs> um but those are the initial interviews and then they let everybody go and then they start conducting conducting <laughs> and, which is <laughs> where you get a, a mallard and you're like what is this well they do and, start with the quack dr uh, roberts like, don't they they do they do and he has a uh, quite a reputation of being a ladies man and his secretary when they're um the, the commissioner and poirot show up the secretary leads the commissioner into the files room and his secretary says there was some scandal with a couple and he she heard them fighting mm -hmm. about him they because they were having an affair and there was a big to do and his husband her husband found out and uh when they interview roberts the next time he confesses that he had an uh an affair with this woman yes mm -hmm. and that she, you know he said he wanted to marry her but she wouldn't and then they ask well you know can we interview her and he says no she's dead yeah. um turns she out she went to uh egypt and got blood poisoning she was so upset uh when i broke it off because um she wouldn't leave her husband and she had to she wanted to go to Egypt, but she uh, got that blood poisoning, and unfortunately, they didn't take very good care of it in Egypt, so she died. Yes. So. And Poirot is asking him to see if he can remember all of the hands, and he goes, um, I got a grand slam at some point. Other than that, I don't really remember, and this is something Poirot asks all of the civilian types, all of the suspects. Yeah. Of like, what can you remember of the game and what can you remember of the room? Right. Um, but he can't really remember much until Poirot like feeds him into it and then he starts recalling things. And he's a very fun character. He's very jocular. He's got a yeah. fun way about him. Yeah. 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 Um, so then we get an interview. Well, Ariadne Oliver goes over to the little cottage where Anne Meredith lives with her best friend, Rhoda. Um, and she talks to them. And Anne has been like, not a housekeeper exactly, but like a, a lady's assistant or what? what is the position? I don't know. Um, maybe it's a ho more I'd like a, a housekeeper. Something. Is probably yeah, maybe it's a best. housekeeper. I mean, um, she was assisting an older woman, so almost a, like a nursemaid, almost like sure. She, she was helping an elderly woman continue to live her life comfortably. Yeah, um, and they had all known about a bunch of her appointments, but it comes out in this interview. Uh, essentially, they talk for a little while, and then um, it comes out that there was an an appointment in between the ones that everyone knew about. Like she always kind of failed to mention this one woman. Um, and after their big interview, Ariadne Oliver invites Rhoda to come call on her in London. And Rhoda does do that. And Rhoda says, Hey, the reason Anne was so upset is because her former uh, mistress died. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was an accident, it, but, like, Anne accidentally poisoned her, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just very upset about that, and she she's very ashamed, and she doesn't want anyone to know. So, uh, also, while uh, Mrs. Oliver is there, or right after she is at their cottage, Major Despard comes and visits Anne, and seems to be romantically interested in her. Mm -hmm. And that leads into his interview, which occurs at a stable. Um, the colonel first right. first interviews him and asks about his like service record. And he's like, everything's above board that way. He goes to Poirot and says as much. And during this time, he when after which, um, when he and Poirot are speaking, he mentions we failed to factor in um, the inspector, the commissioner, because he was the first person to deal with the body, and he did remove 
Shaitana has holding a glass and he removed that. The only fingerprints on it are his. Mm-hmm. And so Poirot is like, he's my friend. I've known him for a long time, but we'll see what we'll see. And then Poirot goes to speak with uh, Colonel Despas, Major Despas. Yes. And he hates horses and he hates the whole experience and he doesn't really get, he gets um, the fact that he was in Egypt with two people and he murdered someone. Craddocks? Yeah, the Craddocks. So, yeah. And he murdered someone because Mr. Craddock was basically doing acid. He was ex- experimenting with like ayahuasca ass stuff and tried to murder his wife who uh despa was in love with and so he shot him in the back and then they buried the body uh in was it was it Egypt or some foreign country yeah it was somewhere not where they anywhere close to where they currently are yeah yeah they were very isolated yes um, so, yeah, and the reason that Poirot figured this out was because he was reading uh, Major Despard's book, and in Major Despard's book, at one point he said the Craddocks, plural, as opposed to, you know, singular uh, one person that he... Yeah. So, yeah, we have a very good reenactment of the night that Despard shot the, shot the man to save... It does end. tie into a moment earlier that we didn't touch on, um, which is just brief, with uh, when Mr. Shaitan is still alive and they're taking this photograph, Mrs. Mm. Lorimer leans into Mr. Shaitana and says, oh, I was acquainted with Mrs. Craddock's. Mm. And Shaitana's like, oh, and like alludes to something very unfortunate happening to her, mm-hmm. but like doesn't go doesn't go into it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do take that photo. That does show up later. Thank you for bringing that up. I'll also say, while we're talking <laughs> about the cutaways, the Family Guy-style cutaways in this episode, <laughs> uh, there's this. There's a lot of sequences because Shaitana has a hobby of photography, and every once in a while, every time they're like, when they talk about meeting Shaitana, he's always like, it's my hobby, and he takes a photograph. But it's against these terrible blue screen backdrop it's like even george lucas is like you could have done better like it's <laughs> yeah. so bad it's hysterical it might not even be a blue screen they might have just like put a matte painting behind the set it looks like a community theater production <laughs> it's hysterical you can tell that they ran out of money for this episode getting Dr. Bashir. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Zoe we want to make her a lot of money. Oh, there hey. it is. We found it. There we That's found right. It. Um uh, and then So, it kind of leaves Mrs. Lorimer. Yes. And Miss <laughs> And, and it's very uh it's you very just strange got stuck in family guy, my guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We we don't know. Everyone is like, Mrs. Lorimer seems like the best person. She would never have done anything like this. Yes. And eventually, she sits down with Poirot, and she's like, yeah, I did it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She also has, like, an almost eidetic memory. She remembers every hand, everything. She remembers everything about the room. No, she remembers nothing about the room. Nothing about the room, but everything about the game. Exactly. Yes. Uh. And at one point, Poirot puts it that she gets so focused in on Mm. what she's doing that everything around her disappears or something to that effect, which is fascinating. And it's a good way to describe um, that kind of memory. But yes. um, And she says, yep, I did it. I went over and I stabbed him. And And Poirot's like, no. (laughs) (laughs) No, madame, you did not. Uh, (laughs) And... There's a beautiful line where he goes, I'm never wrong. And she goes, well, you can't be never wrong. And he goes, no, it is so frequent, or uses a different word, that it startles me. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is beautiful that Poirot is freaked out by how good he is as a detective. I think that's a really fun added thing of like, yeah, I have this superpower and I have no idea what 
<laughs> so good and scary. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. But yeah, it comes out that she is protecting Anne Meredith mm-hmm. because Anne Meredith is her daughter. Yes, which is why there was weird, awkward tension at the dinner. Yes. And they hadn't essentially. Seen each other since. Right. Because what happened was long, long ago, she says, I am not an innocent woman. Uh, when I was married to Anne's father, I pushed him down the stairs and murdered him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which put a little bit of a strain on our relationship, but I haven't seen her since. I guess yep. that was a she little fuzzy. It. Mm-hmm. And witnessed the murder. Yeah. And so she went away somewhere. Yeah. And well, she was 16 and decided to be independent and start taking these jobs. Going there you from go. town to that town. Makes, that makes sense. Yeah. So uh so Anne went away and uh Mrs. Lorimer married Mr. Lorimer and he died within a year of heart trouble. Um yeah. and he was and, and Poirot was like, Oh, this for nothing. <laughs> she says, Yeah. It, basically. Womp womp. Um <laughs> and so she was trying to protect Anne because she was convinced that Anne had killed Shaitana. He says, I, she says, I saw her. I saw her get up and I saw her lean over him and stab him. Um, of course, she was looking from the back, but that is what she is convinced she saw. Yes. Um, well, I was like, I do not know. Then he goes to um, a photographer development place where Mr. Shaitana has a bunch of photographs. Yeah, and that weird man that runs everything. Yeah, John Waters type. Yeah. <laughs> very flamboyant, very um, very strange. And he's they're doing a photo session of, like, Greco-Roman photo shoot. With, like, twinks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Poirot shows up. He's like, I'm here for the photos of Mr. Shaitana. He's like, oh, you know, he said eventually someone would show up for him. Knowing, which kind of implies something they've figured out, that Mr. Shaitana has basically egged someone into murdering him. He wanted, he's such an attention seeker (laughs) that he wanted to, he had a death witch, much like birds. Um, Much like birds. He's so vain, I bet you think this murder's about him. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Good grief. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, and and this kind of confirms it of like, there is this, packet of secret photos of like uh eventually someone will call for these ones that have passed mm-hmm. right um so poirot also is trying to figure out if Anne meredith murdered her mistress why would she have done that yes so ahead of an interview with Anne and rhoda he goes to a shop and buys 19 pairs of really expensive stockings oh, right. which That's were all the rage back then. This is what all the girls wanted. If there was Instagram, it is what all of the Instagram celebs would have been. Look at these stockings. It's like spiders made them. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> They're God. so silky. <laughs> um, everyone Which, was... Like, it's such a weird idea. Like, currently, like, if I feel like I... If I ever bought women's stockings like it would be the creepiest thing <laughs> in, the book, in the world in the book they make a big fuss the two um store clerks they're like what a pervert yeah i don't know if you oh, remember that yeah they just cut that part I didn't, out yeah i didn't remember the clerk's reaction but mm. i remember thinking of the book still though that it was like yeah in the book they're like what weird uh, he's like what a nasty what. old man he's getting it for some young thing and it's what a gross pervert. And then he goes, I want 19 of them. And they all go, oh, fantastic. Their attitude changes immediately. It's very Yeah, cool. yeah, it exactly. Like that for his niece, which like I feel like makes worse. It's so strange. Um, well, it's a lie. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I know. Lie, but, but like if you're going to like lie, like make yourself like look. Like, not a pervert, maybe, is, like, all that I'm saying. I think it's a continuation of Poirot's whole deal, similar to Columbo, where he's, like, he brings himself lower than the people he's investigating to gain their trust. But he's not investigating shop clerks. No, but he needs to do it for the the bit later on. And so he says niece... 
because also like he, he he can't say his like daughter because then they're like when did you mean your wife and when did about yeah. you know and you, then you have to make up more of a lot um so essentially what he does yeah. is he he goes to uh he talks to Anne and Rhoda and you know interviews Rhoda. them interviews Anne about the uh the bridge hand and the stuff in the room etc cetera, etc cetera. And then once she's all done with that, he's like, oh, and I just have this little favor to ask you. I have all of these nieces that I need to give gifts to, and I have 15 or 16 pairs of stockings. Would you pick out the one, like the half dozen that you think are the best? Which is absolutely wild because I thought he bought a 19 identical pairs of stockings, but fine, whatever. <laughs> 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 so... <laughs> um so she goes over oh yes they're all crazy about these stockings and Anne goes and looks at these beautiful stockings it's just so funny to me that this was such a popular thing because if someone bought me stockings now i'd be like great thanks yeah um <laughs> like they're I not a make some returns i guess <laughs> like they're not a fun thing anyway um so <laughs> and then he shows Rhoda in the book. It's the the dagger from Murder on the Orient Express, but they have to change it because they haven't gotten to more Mur- yeah. Moida on the Orient Express yet. Oh yeah. Um, um but he, she sh- he shows her a weapon so that Anne is left alone in the room. Yeah. And he comes back and finds out uh, that she has taken two pairs of stockings. Yeah. Because of course he knew exactly how many pairs there there were. Um. So. He's like, I know. It's because she's a thief. She's mm-hmm. a thief. And then the woman that she poisoned caught her in the act and she had to get rid of her. Yes. So they have Anne suspected of this. They know Mrs. Lorimer killed her husband, but pretty much definitely did not kill Mr. Shaitana. She's basically ruled out. Yes. Yeah. And the doctor... uh. They're not entirely sure about. They do another interview yeah. with his secretary, and she says, oh, yeah, he's a huge ladies' man, but he wouldn't kiss me at the party, uh, the Christmas party under the mistletoe, which was weird because look Despite how hot I am. Despite me trying to do it. Yeah. She's, like, into him. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and like, she's... <laughs> at one point later, Poirot's like, elle est magnifique! Um, yeah. <laughs> like, she's, she's oh. pretty great. I fell in love with this woman. Her performance is great. She's a beautiful woman. And also at one point when earlier when the inspector is talking to her, she's just like sitting on the desk. She's carefree. She's such a fun. Yeah. Free of concern. Right. Wonderful attitude. Um, but, but she says, yes. Go ahead. So uh, it comes out in the interview that the doctor has a regular bridge partner. Which goes against what he said at dinner. Yes. Right. And that they have a regular bridge game and they keep the door locked. Which had me laughing because I was like, immediately I knew what was up. I was like, oh, she's so sweet. She doesn't understand what's going on. Right. What do you? Don't you make me. <laughs> but it's also Mr. Craddock. Um, who he is Brit Player's Witch, because she finds weird because she's like, it's weird that they maintained a friendship because they were good friends before the whole incident happened with Mrs. Craddock. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I think I said Craddock before for Major Despard, and it wasn't, that wasn't the last name of the couple that he was with uh, where he killed the husband. I think the Craddocks are the are the uh, husband and wife involved with um with I, I, that was I. I had gotten that confused. Okay, that wasn't you. Okay, great. So the Craddocks are the are with the doctor. It was a different last name for the for Major Despard. Sorry was about it? that. Uh, it honestly doesn't make a huge amount of difference, other than the fact that it's a, it's two different couples. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So Poirot has figured something out, and is this where he gathers? No, because he has to confront the commissioner as well. Because at some point, Shaitana's house is broken into. And every yeah. they, the, the thief was clearly looking for something. Oh, yeah. And Poirot, after he goes to the photographer and he gets the photos developed, 
he goes through them and then he confronts the commissioner about this and he goes, you broke into the home. And he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, you broke into the home. And he's like, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. And Porter's like, I, you and I both know that I know. Right. But we're going to keep moving forward in the investigation because mm-hmm. that does not mean you killed Shaitan. Yeah. And then is it the parlor reveal after this or is there more? Might as well be. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Um, we're on the Scavenge Network. You can go to scavengesnetwork.com and check out all the great podcasts there. Next month, not this month as I thought, we're, they're doing a showcase and we're going to be part of it. Um, and we're going to review a very special piece of media, I'm sure. We'll figure it out and agree on that later. Um, I'm pushing for Star Wars Episode Two: Attack the Clones, which I still demand is a political thriller and therefore is a mystery. Um, you can also go to teespring.com slash the mill uh, for our merchandise and you can get t-shirts, mugs, etc. And then also personal plug if you're in the New York area that I run a comedy show out in Woodside, Queens every Friday night at 7 p.m. At the B Cafe, and we have mostly, if not all, vaccinated comics. We're do- trying to do it as safely as possible. There's, it's on a back patio, so there's ventilation and all that good stuff. It's an outdoor show. I'm going to try to come next week. Yay! Because I'll be back in New York. Ah, which also means we get to record in person. Oh, yeah. I've got a big Saturday plan next week. Ooh. I'm going to record in person. Then I'm going to go into Manhattan on the subway and get a haircut. <sighs> Zoot to lore. And then give me a bowl and a pair of scissors. I'll hook you up for free. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy be... right now to have a mullet. Well, <laughs> this is going to be my first haircut since uh, cancer. Mm. Wow. Um, and then I am going to... Oh, and the slogan of my salon is look less ugly. <laughs> Rude. Wow. <laughs> I love it. That implies that anyone, <laughs> anybody doesn't go there. Oh, my God. Vicious. Well, even if you do go, it's like, look less That's ugly. <laughs> it's like, God dang. <laughs> I love Yo. it so much. It's on the Lower East Side. That's their slogan. Oh. There's like little French bulldogs run around sometimes in oh, the that's salon. Nice. Yeah. Um, Yes. That would startle it's me. Just, it's a great atmosphere. Um, and <laughs> I think I remembered the name of the woman who had been cutting my hair. And so I think I'm going to be able to go back to her. And Good. it's it's going to be wild because uh, I haven't seen her in years. And I'm going to come in and be like, okay, so here's what's been going on with my hair. I had none for a little while. Um <laughs> Um, and then after my haircut, I have I am coming back to Queens to get on to get all dressed up, get on Zoom, and attend an awards ceremony as a nominee. Oh, that's right. Ooh. We have an award nominated actress in our midst. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yes, and you have I, an award winning actor in your midst. As well. That's right. I haven't won anything. Your ass. <laughs> 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 I have finally been nominated for an acting award for something I did in the year 2020. Which is on, phenomenal. Online. Honestly. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And it was a great performance and production. Thank your you. Your mother and I are very proud. Tyler is <laughs> Tyler is your mother. Oh, okay. Or my mommy. Am I mommy and your papa? We're Melissa, not decide doing this. For us. <laughs> 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 um, but Tyler... <laughs> Tyler, you saw the show last night. Was it any good? Would, would you recommend Comedy at the Bee Cafe? <laughs> what are you on that the That's for itself. Okay. No. I... <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, where can they find us online? <laughs> they can find us at ADC Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Or you can email us at... No. Uh, just the email address is... Amateur Detective Club at gmail.com. You got to make sure you say the right words because at is sometimes in email addresses. 
Oh. So amateur detective club at gmail.com. Yeah, there I have it on my sister. phone, so I will respond to you. If you Great. have criticisms of the show, make sure to address them to me because Melissa doesn't like hearing about it. <laughs> Correct. If you want to talk wrestling, uh, Tristan will just forward that along to me, and we can just yeah, yeah, yeah. chat about wrestling. It'll be if great. If you want to talk about Star Trek, I'll forward it to both Melissa and myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, we got a Patreon. <laughs> That's uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> you like the show? You want us to keep going? Put some pennies in our pocket, please. <laughs> Visit us at patreon.com slash ADCpod. Uh, at any level, you'll get access to our Discord channel. You'll get to share some donk memes. Uh, now, here's also- the thing, Tyler. Yes. I know you said you're mispronouncing dank, right? But donk well, means... donk is like that's how it's pronounced in German if you write it the same oh, way. Ah, like, like donka. Yeah, there's yeah. an E at the end of that. Yeah. Right. But uh, I'll say this donk memes are memes about butts because, you know, you got that donk. So you can do both donk and dank, and you can have some dank donk memes if you want. Well, oh. Jessica Fletcher, you know, baby got back. Uh, so I don't mind dropping those donk memes into our Discord channel. Gotta have my donk. <laughs> <laughs> Dunk and go nuts, if oh, you know what I mean. Goodness. Um, I also have a personal plug. Yeah. I am directing a live and in-person production of Rajiv Joseph's Gruesome Playground Injuries here in Long Island City, Queens, New York, opening May 15th through the 17th, and then the following weekend, the 22nd through 24th. Mm-hmm. It will be live and in-person, but also streamed. We will record the performance prior to the start of the run, and we will stream it uh, starting at the same time as each of the live performances. So follow Company of Fools or at Fools Co. on Instagram to get more information. This is very cool. I'm excited to come see it in person. I love vaccines. Vaccines are great. Yes. (laughs) I'm trying to get them all. They're giving them away here in ah, New York. I'm yeah. going to try and get the Moderna next, and I'm going to try and track down a Johnson & Johnson. It's discontinued, so it's no. like the holographic Charizard of vaccines. Oh, oh J&J is back, baby. Bit. Just like Surge, it'll be on Amazon in no time. <laughs> <laughs> J&J is back. Okay, well, then I don't want it anymore. I want it to be special. <laughs> They're uh, just putting a warning on it because the blood clots are very mm-hmm. rare. Though they are a concern, so yeah. you know if, if you're if if you are prone to blood clots or or whatever, have a condition that might mm-hmm. make you more prone. Maybe you're on birth control, um, which also has a risk of blood clots. Um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, you could also do the Riley vaccine. Uh, you know how anti vaxxers like want their kids like to play in the mud and dirt and like that way i just have you in a room and i just like throw a bunch of fans on you get the wind get the airborne stuff happening yeah (laughs) so that's interesting i didn't realize that was an anti-vaxxer thing because i think there's like something to you know playing in dirt and stuff and uh getting used to allergens but i also think that science is great and we should all take vaccines i think it's like you can do like all of the above yeah. yeah, why not get all of the immunity going? Yeah. <laughs> you don't need... It's not... I heard that. It's herd, herd immunity. immunity. Yeah, herd yeah. immunity. Ah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Play in the dirt and get vaccines. <laughs> you heard it, heard it here, folks. Eat dirt. Make Balto proud. Back to the show. Anne and Rhoda are in their little cottage where they live. They're having an argument because uh, Anne is 
really taken with Major Despard, and she's like, really, all I want to do is run away to somewhere foreign with him and start a new life. And Rhoda's like, and leave me. And she's like, yeah, uh, I guess. I'm sorry. Um, let's just go take a boat ride and be friends. So they go out in the boat, and pretty soon, Rhoda uh, throws Anne overboard and starts hitting her yeah, with a paddle. Windows. And fortunately, Poirot, uh, Major Despard, and a couple and of other people roll up. Yeah, roll up to the cottage and witness this in time for Major Despard only to go take off his tie, <laughs> jump in the water, and save mm -hmm. Anne. But then they can't find Rhoda for some reason, and she is is drowned apparently. Yeah, she goes down pretty, pretty quick. quick. She's wearing a big dress. Yeah, and we do see her like kind of get one like gasp mm -hmm. and then she goes kind of right back down. I wanted possibly to be caught on something. Go ahead. I wanted to mention he doesn't just take off his tie. He takes his time and he takes off his boot and he takes like he's like fully undressing. <laughs> Which is good because you know you need to swim well, but it's like they are actively drowning. <laughs> Yeah. Please hurry. Yeah. <laughs> well, in yes. his defense, no uh, one was helping so him. That is take also his true. clothes off, you know? And he also goes straight for Anne. He does not give a flying care about Rhoda. But to be fair, we don't exactly he can't exactly see where Rhoda is mm -hmm. because she is under behind the boat. He, she's obscured is yeah. also what happens. Yeah. Right. So yeah, so uh, Rhoda's dead. So so it comes out that Rhoda has basically been controlling mm -hmm. Anne this whole time. And she, in fact, was the one who poisoned the mistress that Anne thought she poisoned. And she's just been controlling Anne. And wasn't it like her aunt or something? Her yes. Some family member of Rhoda's? That's how they met. Yeah. yeah. Because she, her aunt yeah. caught Anne stealing and was going to fire her because she stole from her. Right. And then... And Rhoda's like, well, she, she's got to go. So, and then they just became... Friends. Oh, because they were friends, she killed her aunt so yeah, that she because wouldn't she get didn't fired. Want yeah, because she's obsessed with Anne. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she just wants her around all the time. And it's one of those really unhealthy relationships where it's like, you can't have any other interests but fair. me. I mean, I've been trying to sabotage Tristan's life for the very same reason. Yeah. Exactly. You know it's working. <laughs> yeah can't wait to see how your driving lesson goes so then we go <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounded like murder you know, no, it's like misery you're gonna break my legs I'm, you're gonna have to nurse me it's like a phantom thread you know Ugh, the phantom thread so yes please so now we go to the parlor and Poirot has now ruled out and Meredith and Yes. Mrs. Lorimer. And he does the whole like, but it was not you. And it was not you. And not not even you. Superintendent Battle. <laughs> it's like the reverse um, of Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you, and you weren't there. And you weren't there. Everybody wasn't there. Not you. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to miss you, most of all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we've also pretty much ruled out Major Despard mm -hmm. as well because he's not a—he's not really a killer. He was killing in yeah, self-defense. Yeah. His and, you know. record is exemplary um, as a soldier. Not he's enough. an upstanding citizen. Right. So um, we are left with the doctor yes. who was not having an affair with Mrs. Craddock. He was having an affair with his regular bridge partner, Mr. Craddock. <laughs> and <laughs> Tyler, yep. behave yourself. Yeah. You know how much you know, hate gay things You know, on this... Oh. <laughs> Disgusted. <laughs> right. Can we talk about how hot Jason Momoa is, please? <laughs> <laughs> At least oh, once an episode. Yes. <laughs> Um, Why is he in jeans? Yeah, in the so lake? it was. <laughs> He's my thing. He's swimming in jeans in those movies. 
Are you talking about as Aquaman? Yeah, as Aquaman, yeah. Oh, Aquaman. Well, it's something I learned from Jennifer Lopez's should have been Oscar winning performance in Hustlers. <laughs> Uh-huh. Is that denim in like salt water actually does feel comfortable? Oh, because her character Ramona oh. at one point wants to make a swim line called Swimona. Excellent movie. <laughs> you need to watch Hustlers. Everyone needs to watch Jennifer <laughs> Lopez in Hustlers. So help me, God. <laughs> okay. okay, so. <laughs> Doctor, what is it? Is it about Roberts. Doctor Roberts is a homosexual, and has been covering up by pretending to be a ladies' man. And Poirot brings out the photos, and he's like, "I have proof." And um, then it, it, the doctor's like, "This is absurd." He's like, "I have proof," and then he goes, "Okay, fine, I did it." And then he runs away, and then they they catch him, and then. It was him, it was along, him which, all along, which notably, um, Ariadne Oliver immediately was like, it's the doctor. And everyone's right. like, ah, no, he seems like a nice guy. It's obviously not him. She's like, I have a bad feeling about him. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and um, which in the book, Poirot recognizes and everyone else does. And like, they're like, all oh, woman's intuition. Fantastic. In this, no recognition for my, my girl. Very upsetting and very annoying. They don't appreciate her at the end of this. Okay, well, she spoke out of turn, and they're lucky oh she's God. not being hooked up to this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then Poirot goes up to the commissioner, and he goes, these pictures are not of of uh, the doctor. These are pictures of you. And he goes, you can behave however you want, but for me, I do not think this is a good look for you. <laughs> so he was mm-hmm. doing something probably gay as well yeah Mm -hmm. so he has a final moment poirot has a final moment with the portrait of shaitana it's like Mm -hmm. you got what you wanted you weirdo you got murdered and we solved it (laughs) little with a little poirot mustache (laughs) And then, like, instead of, like, a milk mustache, it's blood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> don't give me that look. <laughs> yep. you were, the listeners can't see oh, the look. Fair. He that's... gave me a very creepy look. So what do we think of the episode? Uh, seven out of ten for hmm. me. Um, what did I say, seven? Yeah. Six out of seven is Zoe Watermaker. Yeah. And then the rest is how great the episode was. Like, it dragged sure. in places for me. Uh, I don't think anybody gave, like, a bad performance, but mm-hmm. Despard, the major, and the the colonel or superintendent, like, just, like, the men who aren't Poirot, I couldn't even describe like, their faces to you at this one point, One has to be a honest. mustache. One has no chin. Yeah, it's just like I I don't I I don't know what to say about them. Like the characters just weren't interesting in this adaptation. Yeah, it's like guess who? Mm. You know, does your person have? No yeah, shirt? does your person have a mustache? Does your person wear a hat? God, what a fun game! Think about guess who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I give it a I give it a five or a six out of ten. Very similar. The performances between with Poirot and Zoe Wanamaker are like what make it for me. Their chemistry is phenomenal. I'm glad we get a few more episodes with her. I having read the book, I he's they make changes that don't exactly make sense. You know, like they try to trim it up. I understand, but they could have done I think a better job. I would also say. There was nothing particularly interesting about the way it was shot or the music or anything like these these other things that I really always you know hone in on um, from a movie standpoint um, were not particularly interesting. I didn't find anyone's performance particularly bad. I understood why um, the choices that uh, what is his name Bashir was making. Siddick. Oh, yeah, Alexander, Alexander Siddick. That's not his. 
That's not his real name, by the way. It is much No, longer. it's not. But it is his... Um, I yes. understand what he was doing. I don't necessarily think it worked for me. Um, but I understand what he was going for. Um, but no one was particularly egregious. Um, the highlight was Zoe and the secretary. And Suchet, in particular, has a lot of like really nice little Poirot moments. And I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to see those. And maybe it's because we read the book, but I was like, you know what I, you know i i know this one is he gay in the book i don't that's a that's a change right no robert yeah roberts mm-hmm. i d- i don't remember okay he's not right he does it for some other reason right i don't believe so uh they yeah. change a lot in this adaptation yeah. and it was, it was weird i don't know if it worked but it was certainly an episode of poirot that you get a mystery and an investigation and it was like serviceable there's nothing it wasn't like egregious it wasn't death in the clouds exactly so i actually quite liked this episode um i'm gonna give it a seven out of ten if it if i hadn't read the book it would Mm. probably be an eight for me so um just to address what you said while it's on at the top of my mind about Mm. alexander siddick's performance I think he was miscast um, because I just think that he doesn't come across quite um, like he should in terms of like, I couldn't get creepy from him. Like I just couldn't. And um, like, it doesn't quite work. Uh, There's also a lot of um, racism tied up in this. Yeah. Yeah, um, And it's, you know, it's part of the, books too like it's very clear that this syrian man is part of the reason they don't like him is because he is syrian and it's gross um and there are a couple moments in the episode as well uh where it's like here come the woke police Uh, especially the beginning (laughs) just kidding Um, kidding. (laughs) i'll say this on that there's a moment where ariadne goes what is he yeah and i'm like oof yeah (laughs) oh boy it's at the beginning actually we get it we get it right in the beginning. Yeah, we we just get it right out of the way. Um, but yeah, uh, so it really reads to me uh, a lot, especially because I don't mm-hmm. get the creepiness off of him that it's a lot of racism happening. Um, so it just rang yeah. strange for me because uh, I think he, I think he did the best job he possibly could have with what, he, you know, with who he is and what he can do mm-hmm. in a, in a role. But it wasn't. Uh, he didn't lend himself well as as much as he tried uh it just didn't quite work so um there was that for me uh and then i i really quite enjoyed a lot of the other performances i always i never could tell the difference between the other two detectives um battle and uh the colonel uh in the book yeah. too and but i actually thought that Despard and i uh, and Dr. Roberts yes. did quite a good job. Um, like, the actors did a good enough job that I was like, oh, I know who these characters are now. <laughs> um, but yeah, the changes were what I had the biggest trouble with. Like, you're right, there's nothing, like, super impressive about way, the way it's shot either. Like, it wasn't top-notch. But the changes, some of them were super strange. In the book, Anne is the one who throws yes, Rhoda overboard. That. And... Dispard rescues mm, and Anne Rhoda and yeah. and Anne dies. And it's just such a strange change. And I think they they did it to make it more sympath- her more sympathetic for some reason, but like it didn't need to be changed. Also, Mrs. Lorimer is not Anne's mother in the books, I don't believe. Um she just kind of is uh, yeah. sympathetic to Anne. Because she's a young woman and, you know, she doesn't think women get a fair shake. And I think that Mrs. Lorimer in the books doesn't kill her husband because she wants to marry somebody else. I think it's much more of a, like, Mm -hmm. this guy was a bad guy and I killed him because he was a bad guy. So she's more sympathetic um, as much as the actress did an amazing job in this episode. So some of the adaptation stuff was just odd. I did like, however, that Poirot and Mrs. Oliver were friends from the beginning. That worked for me very much. Um, yeah, so it was just odd 
odd changes. Um, but I thought it clipped along pretty, pretty well. Um, it, it held my attention. Um, everything seemed very clear to me in the episode, though. So, yeah, seven out of ten for all of those reasons. My my <laughs> dissertation about uh, um, cars on the I'll table. I'll say this about the Anne Rhoda thing: is it completely feels unjustified when Rhoda does that? It seems really random. It's just like, why is this happening yep. now? In mm-hmm. fact, Rich guessed what yes. happened in the book mm. when he was watching the episode. Yeah, and he's like, because they have what? that tense moment right before. And I'm like, yeah. With Anne, where she's like giving her a crazy look where she's like, let's just be friends now. It's so odd. Yeah. It's really strange. And Rich, my boyfriend, is a very... He's annoyingly accurate in predicting what's going to happen next in a television show. You know, like he's constantly sitting there like, oh, this is going to happen. I'm like, damn it, you're right. It is going to happen. And then it happens. And I'm like, it, like, he'll spoil something with intuition. So the fact that <laughs> Rich guessed the thing that happened in the book, it makes me think that, you know, maybe that yep. was the better yes. choice. <laughs> okay. Next week, we will discuss... Season 10, episode 3 of Agatha Christie's Poirot, After the Funeral, Mm. when a man disinherits his sole beneficiary and bequeaths his wealth to others just prior to his death, Poirot is called in to investigate, as Poirot does. Okay. Okay. So I do just want to say one more thing about Mm. the episode. Yeah. I did find it refreshing that someone saw Poirot and got concerned, which was Mr. Shaitana at the gallery. And he's mm-hmm. like, oh, you're here. Should I expect someone to get murdered or robbed? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, that's what everyone should be asking. I mean, they yeah. allude to that um, also in um, uh, Blue Train as well. Because she's such a big fan of Poirot. She's like, oh, how exciting, mm-hmm. how thrilling if a crime were to occur. Oh, uh, that's true. But it's the opposite of like. Yeah. <laughs> she's excited please. where he's like concerned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah we've started to reference ourselves in here. Meaning ourselves, meaning the Poirot. I, I have now infused us into Poirot. Yes. Um, but yes. Uh, we're canon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're canon. You could go uh, edit the Wikipedia. <laughs> We should. Yeah. <laughs> we should edit oh, the Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With that, I now call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to a close. Dagger sound. Butt soup. Oh, dang oh. it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>